Welcome to Nadia and Rob, and today we're starting a new little mini-series called My Effervescent Lifestyle. Um, and this is based on something that I've been exploring and developing over the last couple of years, and that is exploring the whole world of making carbonated water and then using it for various things and then carbonating all kinds of other stuff. So where did this all start? Why carbonation? Because frankly, prior to a few years ago, I never really drank much water. Most of my water went down in the form of coffee. Um, but uh, I don't know, uh, I guess as part of, uh, part of this started with listening to Dave Arnold's podcast and reading his book, Liquid Intelligence. I started to get intrigued by the idea of uh, sodas and sparkling waters and the way these enhance things. So I decided to sort of jump into it a little bit. And uh, I thought rather than buying bottled water, which seemed like a terrible idea. I mean, I've for years uh, when I have photo shoots in the studio, I actively discourage people from bringing bottled water because it just seems like such a horrible waste of materials and all kinds of things. So I didn't want to go down that route. So I thought, great, I'll make my own sparkling water. We have pretty good tap water here in Toronto, so I'll do that. So I researched a little bit and I bought a sparkling water machine. I didn't get a soda stream. I got another brand that promised the ability to be able to sparkle things aside from just water. The soda streams restricted to just water. Um, if you do anything else, you'll likely make a complete mess of it um, and void warranty. Uh, just don't go that route. But I wanted to be able to play around because I'd, I'd been reading in um, Dave Arnold's book and listening about, you know, sparkling cocktails and doing all kinds of things like this. So. I want to have that ability. So I bought this other machine called a Drinkmate that promised to be able to do that. I got it, it uses the SodaStream cylinders, the, those shiny aluminum cylinders that you can get and trade in at, at hardware stores and houseware stores and stuff like that. So I thought, okay, great, I'll start sparkling things. Well, that was a bit of a disappointment. Um, it didn't really, it doesn't really carbonate all that strongly. And if I'm going to drink carbonated water, I want it to be, you know, a good amount of bubbles. Plus I began to realize it was crazy expensive because, you know, if you're drinking a fair bit of carbonated water or playing around with carbonating other things, you go through those cylinders at a ridiculous rate because they don't hold much CO2 and trading in the cylinder, is like $25 to refill it. And I thought, this is, this is like crazy expensive, but I was still enjoying the process. So watched a few videos, read a little bit in Dave Arnold's book and decided to take the plunge and go here. Now I'm sure you're probably looking at this thinking, this guy is nuts. What's he, what's he doing here with this like bomb cylinder? But what this is, is a basically a home carbonation setup. Um, a two and a half, no, sorry, five pound cylinder of CO2, a regulator, some hose, and a special interlock that, I'll be right back. interlocks with this top and this top fits on any standard soda bottle so this is a regular I've I've decided I like the two liter soda bottles like you know that hold coke or soda or whatever you can get them at the grocery store um, they're usually I usually get them when the products are on sale or something so they're very inexpensive and this locks onto all of them and then this is used to pressurize them. Now I'm not going to go into all the, the how-to's of carbonation in this video because the next one we're going to release, we're going to show you where to get what you need here, how to put it together. It's really simple, doesn't require like fancy tools or anything, and then how to carbonate your water.
And then in future videos, we're going to show how to carbonate other things like cocktails and coffees and all kinds of interesting stuff. And I've been playing around for the last couple of years with carbonating different things and flavoring carbonated water. And I've got some really nice ideas to share. So I think you'll like it. But first, you'll pro if you're going to be at all serious about drinking carbonated stuff, you're going to want to splurge on this. It's a little bit more expensive to start, but you earn the money back very, very quickly. So basically, just as a, a ballpark, um, I provided a link to where you can buy this complete setup. There's a, um, normally you would get this kind of equipment at a brewer supply place, places that supply home brewers. They have the carbonation cylinders because you have to carbonate beer um, and the, the regulators, the hose, all that stuff. And I have a link to a company here in Toronto that has the whole kit put together for you at a really reasonable price. So their kit, do, 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 do. Um, so let's compare. If you buy a soda stream, uh, you're going to be spending somewhere between $100 and $180 for the machine. And each cylinder, the little cylinders, right, cost like $20 to fill. And the little liter bottles, if you want extra ones for the soda stream, cost like $7 each, which is like crazy compared to this, All right? So if you buy this setup, right, the initial setup was like $225. And I'm, I'm actually quoting all these prices in Canadian dollars. So for those of you in the States, just drop them by about two thirds, I think, or a, a third less, depending on the day. But at any rate, this was around 225 for this complete setup, right? And filling the tank costs $25 for this tank, right? This is equal to five and a half of those SodaStream tanks. So basically, I did a little quick math in my head. If you buy this setup, by time you've filled the tank once initially, and then by time you come around to filling it the second time, you've already ended up being less expensive than buying the soda stream and running the soda stream cylinders through it. So in very short order, you're running cheaper on this machine by a lot than running a soda stream. So that works really well. Um, and the other advantage is this setup, you can put anything you want in these bottles and carbonate it. And it works really, really well. And I'll show you all kinds of interesting things that you can carbonate. So that's what we're gonna be looking at in the next couple of videos. And just by the way, right? Why carbonated water? Why do we drink this stuff? And how long have we been drinking it? Well, turns out humans have been drinking carbonated water probably since the beginning of humans. Because in certain places in the world, right, water is in, held under pressure in deep, deep wells, I guess. Not wells, but um, fissures in the rock. And if the rock itself contains carbon, so if it's like a limestone rock or something that contains carbon, the water becomes carbonated. And when it bubbles forth as a spring, and there are carbonated springs all over the world, it is naturally carbonated. And humans have been drinking that, and they've been saying that drinking car these carbonated springs is good for you, it heals all kinds of ills, they're very popular during the plague, they thought they would help cure the plague, all kinds of things. So humans have been desiring carbonated water for a long time. But it wasn't until the, in the mid 1700s that people started to figure out how we could car like manually carbonate water. And it started off with one experimenter who basically, he was a brewer, and he took water and poured it from pitcher to pitcher over his beer brewing, which has a lot of carbon dioxide given off, and the carbon dioxide flowed into the water and made carbonated water. 
and that was sort of the start of manually making carbonated water. We eventually realized that if we do it under pressure, we can get a lot more carbonation into the water. And if we maintain the water under pressure, we can keep it carbonated. And it was in 1783, no, 17, uh, yeah, around the 1780s, a guy by the name of Schweppes came up with a machinery and a methodology to sort of mass produce carbonated water and then other beverages. He moved to London in 1783, founded the Schweppes Company, and the rest is carbonated history. So we've been drinking carbonated water for a long time. We figured out in the, in the 1700s how to, what we call force carbonation, use CO2 under pressure to get that into the water and create really nice bubbly water that we can, if we keep it sealed, then it will maintain its carbonation. And I can talk a little bit about the science of carbonation as we talk about how we're gonna use this to carbonate water and carbonate other things. So, welcome to my effervescent lifestyle, and we'll be digging in more in the future. Enjoy. Um, be sure to subscribe and hit the, hit the like button if you like this, but also hit the subscribe and the alert button, the little bell, so that you can see when we post our upcoming videos, and you too can join in the effervescent lifestyle. Enjoy. Talk soon.